US President Donald Trump has accused Saudi authorities of the worst cover-up ever in the killing of prominent journalist Jamal Khashoggi and is vowing to revoke the visas of some of those believed to be responsible. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has revealed more details of the alleged assassination squad and what he describes as a savage pre-planned murder. Earlier today a news agency reported that parts of the journalist's dismembered body had been unearthed in the backyard of the Saudi Consulate General's home in Istanbul. CNN correspondent Ben Wedeman is in Ankara and I asked him what he knew about the gruesome discovery being reported. As far as our sources go, police sources in Istanbul, that is not the case. And there's been a lot of confusion today about that with various organizations reporting that the body's been found, but uh, it has not. And uh, certainly the Turkish uh, news organizations, which are quite hyperactive, uh, if there was a scent of a body, they would be on it. So no, the, no, no body to date has been fi- found. And we did hear uh, Turkish President uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan today uh, saying in, in his very pointed questions directed at the Saudis in his speech today that he wants to know where the body is. But no, the body has not been found. Because obviously this is a crucial element of this case. The body still missing, if indeed these reports are incorrect. What new information did President Erdogan reveal in his speech? To tell you the truth, not as much as anybody expected. He had uh, said on Sunday that he would reveal the naked truth about the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. And uh, what we saw was a truth still with some clothing on. Um, He did provide a fairly detailed timeline uh, in which he explained that on the 28th of September, Jamal Khashoggi went to the Saudi embassy and was told to come back on the 2nd of October. That, according to the Turkish president, set in motion the formation of this hit team uh, that came and that the Saudis themselves acknowledged killed the Washington Post columnist. Uh, But beyond some small details, for instance, he did say that the hard drive for the closed-circuit television system within the consulate had been removed mysteriously. And in addition to that, he did say that the local Turkish employees at the consulate and the consular residence uh, were gathered in a room and told there was going, there was going to be an audit today and to, on that day, the 2nd of October, and to go home. Uh, but beyond that, he really just confirmed a lot of the leaks that we have been hearing from Turkish officials who request anonymity. Uh, so we have really just the presidential stamp on a lake of leaks that's been coming out of Turkish officials since almost uh, the first days of this drama. Did he not suggest that some of uh, the Saudi team had in fact done a a recce, if you like, in a forest area outside of Istanbul? Is there some suggestion that that is where his body may be? Yes, he did say there's two areas. There's what's known as the Belgrade Forest and the Yalovar area outside of the outside of Istanbul, um, that they did do a recce there. But I can tell you, CNN and many other news organizations have sent crews to both those areas day after day, and they have not only found nothing, they haven't even seen the police doing anything out there. So that uh, remains something of a mystery. There were leaks to the effect that some of the cars from the Saudi embassy, one or two perhaps, went to those areas the day of the murder. But that remains the most mysterious sort of corner of this labyrinth of a story. What about the personal belongings of Jamal Khashoggi that have turned up in this consulate car? Can you tell us about that? Yes, that's in uh, what's known as the Sultan Ghazi uh, car park in Istanbul in sort of an ordinary business residential neighborhood. It's a... uh, a blue car with yellow, with green diplomatic plates belonging to the Saudi Arabian embassy. We understand that it was parked there several days after the murder, and it was discovered day, yesterday, yesterday 
Istanbul time, and uh, forensic detectives were brought in. They looked around the outside of the vehicle, because, it, but because it's diplomatic property, uh, they had to get a Saudi diplomat to accompany them when they went to look at the interior today. And uh, we are told they came away with two suitcases. We don't know the contents of it and uh, some other st uh, stuff. But <coughs> excuse me, police say that that vehicle was parked in front of the consulate on the 2nd of October, the day when uh, Jamal Khashoggi was murdered. What about the politics of all of this? Because you've got President Erdogan there saying that he wants these people held accountable. He would like some of them to be extradited to Turkey, that the crime has happened there. So any kind of justice needs to be delivered in Turkey. And asking the Crown Prince for some answers. But here's the thing. President Erdogan does not have the best track record in his treating of journalists either, does he? No. In fact, according to press freedom organizations, there are 70 Turkish journalists currently behind uh, bars. But uh, this has given the Turkish president an opportunity to present himself as a champion of freedom of the press, somewhat ironically. And the irony isn't lost on a lot of people, including many, many Turks. Ben, just briefly before we go, this has taken so many twists and turns. Where are you expecting it to go next? Well, then that's going to be interesting because if, despite the much anticipated speech by the Turkish president on Tuesday, Turkish officials continue to leak drip by drip uh, these very interesting details about this case. This drama could go on for quite some time, and I think you know, there's always hanging over the story the audio recording of Jamal Khashoggi's uh, torture, murder, and dismemberment that uh, I think the Turkish president uh, is hanging out there until he gets maximum advantage from, from this story. Uh, so I, I think we can expect more of these day-by-day -day little bits of information coming out to keep this story on the front page. And that is CNN correspondent Ben Wedeman reporting there from Ankara, Turkey.